I've wanted to do this video for a while now. It's been on my mind a lot because this season of my life has been so different from what I'm used to and such a change in my life that has been definitely life changing. Just a whole change in perspective, a change in um, the, the way I think, the way I do my things, the culture that I'm in. There's a whole change, I'm saying. Um, I really have no notes for this video, but I thought that I would just sit down and talk about my experience and my struggles and how I've reached this point and how I'm moving forward from this point. So yeah, I'm just going to take a deep breath. If you talk all the time, you'll never hear what anybody else has to say. And therefore all you'll have to talk about is your own conversation. The same is true for people who think all the time. That means when I use the word think, talking to yourself, sub-vocal conversation, the constant uh, chit-chat of symbols and images and talk and words inside your skull. Now, if you do that all the time, you'll find that you've nothing to think about except thinking. And just as you have to stop talking to hear what others have to say, you have to stop thinking to find out what life is about. And the moment you stop thinking, come into immediate contact with the unspeakable world. So when you clicked on this video, you probably clicked on it thinking about the struggles in college being partying and the temptation to have sex or the temptation to smoke weed or the temptation to do all these things that are inherently um, um, bad and against the teaching or something like that um, but this is actually not what this video is about because I feel like that's a lot of the misconception it's not a misconception because those things are a struggle for college students especially Christian college students um, but I don't think that that's the main struggle that you go through with your faith when you're in college or in your university I don't think that's the main issue that you go through to be honest because those things will always be there even in any parts of your life in any what's the word any time of your life those things will always be there all those temptations will always be there and that's a different sector of the struggle but for me personally my personal struggle has actually been internal it's not about the external things that are happening around me it's more about me it's actually been my 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 most um bit my biggest issue i guess not really an issue but like my biggest struggle i guess has been me myself just my journey my personal journey with christ my personal journey with god like with my faith you know and Speaking of that, I just want to talk about how college ties into that and how um, that just ties into everything that I've been going through and all that. So, coming to college, I came to college, I grew up a Christian, I'm Nigerian, I grew up in Nigeria, um, most, um, a lot of Nigerians are either Christian or Muslim, that's usually, it's like a, it's a very religious, religious country. And so I grew up as Christian, my mother is a firewoman of God. Um, so I grew up in that household of going to church, waking up in the morning and having devotions. I went to a school where you wake up and everybody comes together and we have devotions together and things like that. Um, but going through all those things, there was never really a personal connection with my faith. I, ne I never really had that. Like, yes, you'd say the prayer to give your life to Christ and you have those times where God breaks your heart and those, those, those experiences are valid. Those experiences are there. But there is but i was never was never a commitment that i made and so it was more of me feeding off from my mom's faith or feeding off from um just like the faith of the people around me and so i guess the way college com comes into this is 
coming to college is kind of coming out of that shell. I went to boarding school so it's not even about independence because I learned independence very early in my life. Um, it's more about coming out of a structured environment I guess because when we're at home, you have your parents looking out for you, making sure you're doing all the stuff, doing the things like that. When I was in boarding school, there were rules, there were things we had to we had to set, we had to do. We had to go to devotions, we had to go to church on Sunday, things like that. So, a strict environment, so there was structure, there were things that you had to do, there were rules for different things. But coming into college, it's you. It's you and your studies, it's you and your friends, it's you and your organizations, it's you and everything you choose to be involved in, everything you choose to put yourself in, you know? And so it's kind of where you start to um, see, okay, is this something that's for me? Like, is this something that I am doing for myself or is it something that I'm doing for my family or something I'm doing? You see that in so many different situations with your major, with your um, organized, the things that you join, the things that you go, like, am I doing this for my, is this for me, is this for my family, am I doing this for, who am I doing this for? Um, and how is this a commitment for myself? You know, am I doing this major because my parents want me to do it? Or, you know, so that also ties into your faith, you know, and coming from a home of Christians. It's, I know it's definitely different for people who don't come from a home of Christianity and come in and come here and find their faith. Like, to be honest, like, I find that so amazing that you come to college and you find, I have friends that, that didn't grow up um, as Christians and they came and found Christ in college. And it's amazing to see that, you know, and be able, amazing to see just that come to life and how that impacts people's lives. And sometimes I just feel like I have been doing this for all my life, you know, and I don't think I'm at the level as you are. But it's not about comparing yourself to other people, but I just wanted to say how I admire people who find, who, like, I just love the way God grabs people's hearts. It's so amazing how Christ pursues people and grabs your hearts. Anyways, but going back to what I was saying, so coming from that environment and then coming into here, it's more about finding who, what, what's, what, what is important to you, finding what is, what is something that, what do you want to continue with? What is, what is that, what is this faith to you, you know? And so that is something that I've been learning and something that I have been struggling with just over, this is, I just finished my third year, um, going to be a senior next year, I'm going to be a fourth year university student, so by the grace of God next year I'm going to graduate. And so it's just been an ongoing thing that you just keep going through and things like that. And so that's kind of how college ties into the whole situation. And so when I say that, that college has really, that's, um, that my main struggle has been myself. I say that because of that commitment that you have to make. Oh, you not that commitment that you make, you know? And it's that this faith is from me. I believe in this. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I believe in his teachings and I know who he is. I, and through him, I know who I am. And I find my identity in him. And that personal relationship that you form with him and and so that's hard <laughs> and I just realized I just that's something that I've come to realize and it's and this just has been my experience with it because there are people who have had revelations and they have this beautiful you know introduction to Christianity and God, like they just take it up and ride with it. You know, it's just amazing. And it's just, I love to see that. But that's not how it's been for me. It's been more of like a, uh, uh, uh. It's just ups and downs and ups and downs. And sometimes I'm on the mountain and sometimes I just drop. And it definitely goes into just like putting time out, out in your day to get to know Christ. And you know, then reading the Bible, praying with Him, talking, praying to Him, you know, talking with him having conversations with the holy spirit every day you know having that awareness that you're living for him and not for you is a whole different paradigm because you are as a college student it's like your like your job is you know work hard do well in school you know work, um study hard do this do that so you're so you're oh you're a go-getter you're going for something you're moving towards something and so being peaceful and being in this place where Christ takes over 
is has been my most my biggest struggle because i want to be in charge of it you know i i want to i want to make sure that i'm doing this right like i'm, I'm studying well for my exams i'm i'm doing my homework i'm getting these things done i'm moving forward but then Christ calls us to just dwell in him, you know, and of course you're going to be doing all those things. Not if you're just going to sit down and pray and expect him to do everything for you. But then there's a peace that comes with that, that that's not present in college. Because in college you're expected to move, you're expected to move, you know, you have that drive of this, that you're always busy, you're always moving, you're, you're pulling late nights, you're pulling all nighters, things like that. And that, so that's the culture that you're in. And so having that you know I believe God has everything you know Jesus has a plan I do not I don't have to worry is a different different mentality and and what's the word and um, and committing to that to yourself committing to that I want I want that you know because like if you see these things I see these things in people around me people who have faith strong faith around me and I'm like I love that I love that in you I see the fruit of Christ in your life but then I don't you know but then but then getting that for myself it's like I want it but do I want it enough and I guess that's the question that I've you know like you ask you ask yourself in a situation like do you you want this but do you want it enough is do you think it's like do you is is Christ worth it to you you know that those questions that you have to ask yourself those those life altering questions that you ask yourself and you ponder on your faith and you ponder on the things that you are going through and the and the and the just the experiences that you have and you just say you know do I want this I guess that's where I am right now and it's it's been a long time coming and to get to a point where you make a decision of am I for this or am I not for this and you just commit to it and um, so personally what I'm doing now moving forward that's been my journey so far um, I don't want this video to be way too long I just wanted to share those insights with you I hope this is I know I've been, I've been rambling, so I hope this makes sense, you know, and um, and I my plan for moving forward, I'm kind of in this place where I feel like I have to relearn everything. <laughs> and I guess that's been, that's my, that's how I'm moving forward with this. It's, I feel like I, I need to just relearn because I feel like coming to college, I came with the mindset of growing up, you know, what I learned, which is good, you know, that's always great to have because you you have that background. Like I cannot deny that there is a God. Like I physically cannot deny that because of my background, because of my of my faith being, you know, rooted from when I was young. Like I know because I have seen the miracles and I've seen the things that he has done in my family and things that he has done in my life to be honest because even in college I've seen the way he has done things because a lot of times I don't do anything because even with all the things I'm trying to say that um that um what's the word that I'm I want to be in charge and I'm doing these things and I'm busy and everything but at the same time to be honest I feel like I don't do anything like sometimes you know I just feel like I don't I don't even work that hard but at the same time he just makes it work out somehow <laughs> and it's just crazy so that's why I, I feel like I cannot like I personally fully cannot deny that there is a God like I'm not that's not the issue right here like I really I physically just can't deny that you know, like even if I've been away from him and I haven't read my Bible, I haven't spoken to him in a long time. If I'm in a situation where I need him, I'm going to call on him because I know he's there and he's listening to me. <laughs> and so in having that inherent knowledge has been such a blessing from growing up. And it's been, it's been such a blessing in my life, even in times where I've run away, at times where I've been away from Christ. And so I physically just cannot deny that. But then at the same time, I think there's also things that you also have to unlearn or things that you have to learn again you know and it just it just it just comes from the different things like the character of Christ who is Christ 
how did you learn about God when you grew up? Did you learn about him as a powerful, angry man in the sky who gets angry when you sin, so you have to ask him for repentance? Because that's just, honestly, that is how a lot of little kids learn about Christianity, they learn about God, learn about Christ. And I feel like that has been so hurtful because the church has done such a bad job in some serious areas to be honest and so people children learning oh he's this angry man in the sky um if you sin he's gonna strike you down he's very judge like you know having the judgmental church members and having all those things has has been such a what's the word such a stigma in the in the in the christian in the christian world christian every, like that has just overwhelmed so many people that people have left the church run away from the church because of that you know and it's so dis it's so it's such a disgusting plan of the of the enemy plan of the devil you know and it's something that um has just not been a good thing and so how did you learn about christ growing up and i guess that's how i'm looking at it now moving forward how did i learn about god what did i think about him what how did i how did i how did i grow up maybe like it wasn't something that was done intentionally but from the from the things that you learn things that you pick up as you grow up and how can i unlearn all those things and learn who he really is like how do i now pour myself or like commit myself to studying the bible and 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 really learning who he is and removing this and having this you know now learning over again who he is what he's teaching say where he wants me to be how he wants me to live my life you know things like that and learning him again one of the questions i always had that i felt like no one could answer for me <laughs> was that i was like i understand that christ died for us i was always like yes i've heard this a lot of times he died for us he what to call it he took away our sins things like that, things like that. but then i was always like so, but then what was i was like i understand it was taking away our sins but why did he have to die you know why like why did he have to, why couldn't god just be okay like everyone is saying like but why does that significance have to happen and i got my answer and so i feel like and um i don't want to go into the answer right now but basically the answer quickly the answer is that um blood had to be shed for our sin so it was because our um yeah so basically this the what's the bible verse that says the um the consequence of sin is death and so blood had to be shed for us to be clean and things like that so you had to be cleaned with the, the blood of a holy one one who never sinned and one who never um was yeah but then he's also human that kind of thing so that's kind of why so i got my answer for that and so one thing that i've learned so hard something i've learned in college and i think that that's also been a product of the intellectual environment that i'm in and everyone just having those thoughts and these so meaning so many smart people just asking questions is to ask questions i feel like we grew up in the church having oh god no don't ask him no you can't question god you can't do this you know you know stay away from you know don't question him he's almighty but then why do we think that god is afraid of our questions or god cannot answer our questions or god is you know god is god is all knowing and all like we can't even like the bible said we can't even understand we cannot even understand the level of ex like the excellence that God is, like the sovereignty. And you think that he's hurt by you asking him a question? You know, like that's when you think about it now, it's so when I think about it now, it's so it doesn't make any sense because that's you ask where you grew up, you know, don't question God. But how do we God did not create us to be followers? He didn't create us to be, oh, anyone they tell you to go, you move. That's why he did not he did not say everybody has to be a Christian. He said, I will give you free will and you have to choose me. That was literally what he said. So we have to choose him. He will never enforce it on you. That is something that we have to understand is that God will never enforce it on us. And so the fact that he made us intellectual beings, he gave us a head, he gave us, he gave us a brain, he gave us a mind to think. How do you think that he wouldn't expect us to ask questions? So that's something that I've tried. I've been stripping away, and something like these, you know, things that I've learned about God that I'm removing, and I'm trying to learn the new, the, the actual, the actual real things. And it's like, and so it's like asking, asking those difficult questions, wanting to know, because that's how you build your faith. You want to know, and you get the answers, and you see that all these, all these questions have 
answers and it gets insane but all these questions really do have answers because he wants you to find him and as you keep asking those questions and you keep consulting with different you know praying to him asking him talking to him he will give you those answers somehow maybe it's through somebody maybe it's through something that you see maybe it's through a bible verse but you will get those answers and he wants you to ask those questions no matter how hard it is he wants you to actually ask him and he will he will reveal it to you you know and it's 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 something that i've definitely been learning it's something that i've been becoming more comfortable with and so it's so having those intellectual conversations where i learn from people they learn from me and we're having those conversations and that's how you grow your faith i feel like that's that's what the community of christ should be and that's what that's what he created the church to be not people who are like ah, you're asking that question ah no i'm not gonna talk to you or you know judgmental that's not what he wanted he wanted us to feed off of each other because he said iron sharpens iron and that is literally what he said in the bible we are meant to sharpen sharpen each other each other if you're having a doubt somebody can answer a question and help you with that doubt and you move up you know we're all meant to be moving up and moving each other up and helping each other move up and so yeah so that's honestly where i am this video is really long already but that's where i am right now just in the place of relearning and rebuilding my faith you know re reading the bible and asking questions and um just rebuilding and moving forward in where i am right now and not just staying where i am because i don't like where i am <laughs> and realizing that reflecting shedding away and learning new things because you always have to replace if you're shedding things away you have to replace what you're shedding away with new things if not those things will come back that's something that i've learned as well and so yeah I just wanted to sit down here and have a conversation just talk to you guys about my faith because it's something that I like to share on my channel and it's something that I like to just talk about sometimes um, I hope you guys are having an amazing day thank you so much for sitting with me I hope you guys watched it to the end if you did I love you <laughs> and yeah have an amazing day I hope this helps someone I hope this inspired somebody or touch somebody somehow I just wanted I just want this video to, to touch someone and just you guys should just be on that this journey with me you know and so yeah thank you for watching this video i love you guys have an amazing day um uh, subscribe to my channel if you're new my name is mm uko i like to make a lot of really cool videos <laughs> and so subscribe like this video and comment down below tell me what your walk has been tell me what struggles you've had and how you've come out of struggles you know comment down below let's have a conversation i'm going to read all your comments and reply um so let's just have a conversation about this whole thing um, yeah, so have an amazing day guys. I love you. I Love you. God loves you. Christ loves you and I just hope you take something away from this video. Have an amazing day <laughs> again <laughs> I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys Peace and strength